The spirit of the Holy Ghost that's in this place. Yes. Thank you. so great. First of all, giving, giving honor to God. Yes. To the mysterious yes. that the Holy Street. To his trustees. And the organizations. Present of organizations. I greet you this morning, still in love with God. You know, as I pray to God about what to preach today, you looked over my last two or three weeks and said you've been in a battle. Then he led me to the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. And I'll be concentrating on, on if you keep your Bibles open with you today, verses 13 and 14. Where it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. And this is where he also led me. Help me God. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. <laughs> The question that I have for you this morning, which is our theme, what do you do? What have you done all you can? What do you do? What have you done all you can? Reverend Thompson, we're all in one way or another familiar with this morning text. Here we are. Partly because many of us have been reared in the church yeah, we have been. and are thus familiar with the stories from the Bible. Yeah. Or perhaps because most of us have seen the movie The Ten Commandments <coughs> which starred Charlton Heston as Moses and Yul Brenner as Ramesses. Yes. However, man, today, this day historical recounting before us this morning is more than just the stuff of Hollywood. Uh -huh. Our background, Brother Carol opens with Moses and the children of Israel, probably about two million in strength. Heading out of Egypt on the way to the promised land. Oh and our text, Reverend Robinson, picks up with Moses and the children of Israel free from slavery but surrounded. My Lord, my Lord. Surrounded on the north by desert, yes. on the south by desert, mm -hmm. on the west by Pharaoh's fast approaching army, uh -huh. and on the east by the Red Sea. Look at somebody and tell them that they're all surrounded. Um, Sister Dick, this picture alone is enough to fill the heart of the strongest in faith with this man. Yet, in the midst of all that, Reverend, Moses gives us two commands and two promises of deliverance that we could use to answer the question, what do you do when you've done all you can? In other words, what do you do when you're surrounded by the desert of despair on the north, surrounded by the desolation and dismay on the south, anxiety, my Lord, and apprehension on the east, and an enemy of your situation is fast approaching on the west. What should it do? Well, the first command Moses tells us 
is to fear you not. Well, we all know that in the Bible, words have different meanings. In fact, this word fear has five general meanings. Number one, it has the emotion of fear. Number two, it has the intellectual anticipation of evil. Number three, it has reverence or awe, A-W-E. Yeah. Number four, it has the righteous behavior or piety. Uh -huh. And number five, it has formal religious worship. Now, again, and I, I don't have time this form to go into much detail this, about each one individual. However, I want you to know that the command in our text, fear not, deals with the emotion of fear. Do I have a witness now? How many of you have ever been surrounded and you thought that you couldn't make it out? And all of a sudden, fear helped me somebody. And all of a sudden, fear overtook you. Do I have a witness right now? Do I have some witnesses now who can tell me that they've been fearful before? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know. Oh, yes. Thirteen. Reverend Thompson, that this is not an easy command. Like Israel, many of us are going through some stuff. And our situations warrant fear. Brother Roland, our situation warrants the emotion of fear. Help me, somebody. Yet the command here is to quit fear. Look at somebody say, quit fear. Quit fear. In other words, the charge is to let the peace of God rule our heart. Yeah. The first command that Moses gives us is to fear ye not. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, but this requires a whole lot of faith. Yeah. In the midst of what you're going through, in the midst of anticipated danger, in the midst of something going wrong, do I have some witnesses in the house this morning who have been in a fearful situation? And God brought you through. Do I have a witness right now? Somebody may be waving a whole lot of hands right now. Know that, know that if it was not for God in your life, help me somebody. You see, Moses was able to stand firm. Now listen here. Now, I, that's why I slowed it down here. Because he did not focus on the situation. Nor did he focus on his own ability. My Lord. Come on, somebody, help me preach. Okay. He was able, he was to stand because of his confidence in God. Yeah. He did not allow his emotions of fear to overshadow God's, prom God's promise of deliverance. Because you got to understand, Brother Hagel, that sometimes when we act out of our own ability, that we do some knee-jerk reaction. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one. But you've got to understand that when you stand still and you are peaceful and rely on God to bring you through, it may not happen tomorrow, but do I have some witnesses in the house that can tell me that by and by when the morning comes that God brought you through what you came through? Do I have a witness right now? You see, Reverend Thompson, both was able to stand firm because he did not focus on the situation. Nor did he focus on his own ability. He was able to stand because of his confidence in God. He did not allow, Reverend Thompson, his emotions of fear to overshadow God's promise, promise of deliverance. One of the great lessons we learned from the book of Exodus, you don't want to take my time, do you? As a whole and a message we read throughout the scripture is that God is ever present. Turn to Exodus 13. You get your Bible, you turn to Exodus 13. Yes. Verses 21 and 22. Uh, I told you to keep your Bibles ready. It says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. To go by day and night. He took 
not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And then this tells us that ever before them was the physical reminder that God was present with them. In fact, verse 22 says that the God did not depart from them. I don't know whatever that you're going through right now. But you've got to understand that God will not depart from you. If you trust him, come on somebody, help me. Do I have a witness now? <laughs> if you trust that God is going to bring you through, he will never depart from you. God would have to put you in a situation sometimes that the only person that you can rely on is him. Anybody on my street right now? He puts you in a situation where you on all sides are surrounded. And the only person that can get you out. Yeah. Oh, come on, help me somebody. Is God. Do I have some witnesses in the house this morning that you've been surrounded on every leaning side? And only God brought you through. Somebody better say, God, oh, God is the only one that brought me through. Can I preach this thing? Yes. You see, God was with his people then. And he is with us today. In fact, Jesus promises in Matthew 28, 20. He says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Then he says, Amen. Amen. I need to let everybody know this morning that God does not want us to fear. In fact, Jesus repeatedly instructs us not to fear. John 14, 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. If you, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Revelation 1, 17, 18, 1, 17, and 18, Jesus says in verse 17, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And then verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Then he says, Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So what do you do when you have done all that you can? Number one, fear not. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Quit the emotion of fear. And number two, the second command of the difference is part right here in our text. Look at somebody say, stand still. Stand still. Now, if you thought fear not was hard. <laughs> I'll let that sink in for a couple minutes. If you thought fear not was hard, how hard is it? How hard is it to stand still when trouble help me somebody surrounds us all? Now you got to understand. I told you to fear not, but you're only human. That's right. And, and, and then Moses told you to stand still when everything is breaking loose. How in heaven's name can you, am I supposed to stand still? But if you believe and trust in God, help me somebody, that God will bring you through. Because the Bible he has given me many victories. Now, watch this out. The Hebrew translation and I'll take my seat because this is too much to preach. The Hebrew translation here means to stand, to set or station oneself or to present oneself. In my research, Brother Roland, I've discovered that this verb Yeshua, stand still, expresses in a reflexive voice a command concerning a result or a fact. 
Let's try it this way. The command to stand still, Leslie, or the ability to stand still is reflected. Like a sound that you hear. By the time you hear the event that caused the sound, it has already taken place. Do I have a witness here? If a jet flew overhead faster than the speed of sound, by the time Reverend Thompson, and now this is, this is the thing that's gonna blow your mind. By the time you heard the sonic boom, the jet has already come and gone. Right. Right. Come on somebody, help me preach. Yes. In other words, and I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring it home now. In other words, your ability to stand still has nothing to do with you. Can I, can I preach this thing? We are simply reflexive of, of a result or fact of something that has already taken place. Do I witness now? You, you get bad news that's already taken place. But then it's up to you to stand still. Do I have a witness now? Because it's already taken place. Look at somebody say, it's already taken place. You've got to understand the ability to stand still is not based on you. But the ability to stand still is in your faith in God. Know that God is going to bring you through the evil or what is going to hurt you. Do I have a witness now? Oh, that thing is too deep for some of you. Our ability, Reverend Thompson, to stand has everything to do with God and nothing to do with you or us as individuals. Look at somebody say nothing. In fact, 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand to take heed lest he fall. The idea here is, is don't get to think that you are all that. Do I have a witness right now? You didn't do anything but stand there. Do I have a witness right now? You didn't do anything but just trusting God with everything. Anybody been in a situation right now that you just stood there? And God brought you out? I guess there's only two oh, yeah. people in the church. <laughs> this speaks of ideas that we form in our own mind about ourselves. These thoughts are based on our own account, your reputation of yourself, what you've seen, uh, what you suppose, and what you think. The scripture helps us to understand, yes, after you've done all that you can, yes, just stand there. Do I have a witness now? But don't allow your own account, your own pleasure, or reputation make you think that you were able to stand all by yourself. Do I have a witness now? Look at somebody and say that I can't stand by myself. Do I have a witness right now? But you got to, what stands still, and so we're told by Moses to stand still, stay right where you are. God did not tell you to move. Stand right here. Stay right there. God did not authorize you to quit. Stand still. You tried it your way. Oh my Lord. And you failed. And you failed. Your way got you in trouble. So after you've done all you can, somebody say stand still. Yeah, stay in place. Don't quit. Don't worry about your situation. What things might look like later on. Yes, the grass may look greener on the other side. But you can't cross over the Red Sea of your situation until God tells you to move. Do I have a witness right now? And in this case, he didn't say move. He said stand still. Because sometimes God got to show us all around the situation that no matter what you thought that you got yourself through, that God is the only one that will bring you through. Look at somebody say, stand still. In other words, do whatever you need to do to stay right here. Because one of those, one of these old days, when the roll is called, 
may be able to say present I'm here and accounted for yes Lord I'm right where you told me to be waiting until my change comes here at Oak Street working on what you told me to do taking care of my sacred trust help me somebody working in the kitchen and the food pantry and our reach ministries working in the clothes closet help me somebody working in the kitchen preaching in your word teaching in your word and serving in your people and I just want to tell everybody two things when you are in a situation fear not look at somebody say fear not and number two stand still because you have no authority whether you stand still or not do I have a witness now because by the time that you worry about something it has already happened do I have a witness right now by the time that, that you think that you can't make it God has already brought, brought the deliverance do I have a witness right now so stop worrying about things that you can't control you can't even control your breathing because every night that you go to sleep you've got to understand that you don't control your own sleep you almost think that you control your own sleep but that's all right fear not stand still what do you do when you've done all you can do I have a witness now what do you do this 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 year of 2014 Evil is going to be set you. Discouragement will come in your camp. You have a witness now. But everybody won't do the same thing that you do. You're going to get upset. You may even get angry. But let me stop by just to tell you two things that Moses told you. And I'll preach the next song. I'll preach the rest of all next Sunday. But two things that Moses told you in spite of the evil and in and the anticipation of evil, right. fear not because I got this. Look at somebody and say, he got this. Do I have a witness now? And don't you know there are times, and, and I know I'm preaching to myself, that there are times when you just have to act human sometimes uh, and realize that sometimes that you don't have it all going on. So therefore, I, instead of you doing a knee-jerk reaction, just stand there and see how good God will be to you. Anybody on the street right now understand what I'm talking about? Give God a hand wave and say, I'm going to stand in 2014. I'm going to stand there because God is able to do exceedingly wonderful things. He said, taste oh. Taste and see that the Lord is good. 